everyone, welcome to another episode of Equip and Elevate. We are so excited because this is a special edition in partnership with the Motsipe Foundation. This is in line with the Youth Expo. So you will note that in the next couple of episodes, we'll be doing a few conversations and interviews with some of the speakers and some of the delegates. So for us, it was really important to be part of something like this because it really is going back to say, as the Youth Expo, they're looking for ways to open opportunities for young graduate, young people that are still studying and really exposing them to the job market. So as Equip and Elevate, it made sense for us to be part of something like this. So I cannot wait to have you guys go on this journey with us. I can't wait to introduce all the amazing guests we met. And guys, we had so much fun. So you'll hear music in the background. You'll hear speakers just showing their passion. We met amazing people and really left inspired. So make sure you go on the Mutsipa Foundation website and just check out the many opportunities they have for you as a young graduate. And next year, make sure you don't miss out on this. If you're a young graduate or young person and wanting to learn more about the other opportunities that are out there, that is the place for you to go next year. So we'll see you guys next year and just enjoy and let me know what you think in the comment section. Welcome guys, we are back again. We have Batu in the house. We have Cedric from Batu. He's going to be sharing some of why they're here, why they're involved in something this amazing for young people. But before we get into that, I wanted to get to know a little bit for anyone that's listening, <laughs> who is Cedric? And really just telling us about how you got to do what you're doing right now. What was your career progression? Um, for anyone that's listening out there and just wants to maybe follow the same path and just sort of giving them those nuggets. Okay, thank you for having me. So as, as introduced, my name is Cedric Dupoko. I am the managing director of number one most admired brand in Africa, Batu. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted uh, to check. <laughs> this should, oh no, definitely. I'm always on brand. I always make sure that I, I take my sneakers um, wherever that I go because we sell durability and comfort. Mm. So... However I walk my journey, I'm always doing it in a durable way and in a most stylish and comfortable way. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about who you are <laughs> outside the, com the company. You know, um, off the record, we were having this conversation, yeah. right? And I told you that I'm just a server. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I, I am. I, yeah. I'm here to serve South Africa. Sure. I'm here to serve the continent at large, which mm. is Africa. And I'm also here to serve... The business that I work for, you know, I think that there's a narrative that says, Africa, your time is now. And I think that it is time for young black professionals, you know, to, to take heed, you know, to take their rightful place and do great things in marketing and industry. Mm -hmm. And I want to be, um, you know, one of the contributors to that notion and to that movement. Mm -hmm. um, on a lighter note, um, I'm Cedric Dupoko, as been introduced. And I'm a lover of things, you know. I'm a brand builder. I'm a business manager. I love people. I'm a child of God. I love Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had a very interesting career, you yeah. know. Um, I'm quite young. I'm 32 years old. Sure. <laughs> so my career started in retail, actually, at the Cape Union Mart, where my skill set was really strengthened. You know, I think the retail industry, you know, it's a cutthroat industry mm. because there's a lot that happens. Mm. Every day you have to stand, you know, put your best foot forward and make sure that you are driving the highest levels of conversions with the mm. customers that are coming in, mm. you know. I started there, I was a store manager for three years, and then uh, by God's grace, I worked for Microsoft where I was an area manager for three years, mm -hmm. managing um, uh, field force service staff. And then I then moved, took a different route in my career to advertising. Sure. So I worked for seven years at DNA Brand Architect oh, wow. under the leadership of the awesome Sylvester Chalke, yes, the marketing yes. rep, maverick, you know, Mr. Stand Against Ooh. Blend himself. He is amazing, yeah. you know. So I was craft I, my, my skill set was really really developed there yeah. you know in terms of brand comms you know strategy and making sure that we are really really galvanizing our efforts in building sustainable businesses mm. so i am a, a dna baby <laughs> <laughs> i am um yeah a maverick at heart you know yeah. i i believe in doing things that are com compelling 
and impactful than markets. Sure. Yeah. And I think when you speak about that compelling and impactful, yes. Um, what would you say when you were starting out in this career specifically? Did you imagine that to be what you'd be doing impactful? I didn't think so, you know. Um, but fortunately, you know, through the principles and the, you know, the learnings that my parents taught me, you know, it was always be the first to arrive and the last to leave, mm. and always learn, you know, um, in a conversation. Um, speak less and be a sponge and absorb the information, mm. you know. Um, yes, I, d I do have a background in, in PR and in comms because I studied at UJ, mm. you know, and, you know, the prominent University of Johannesburg really teaches you a lot, you know, mm. theoretically, um, which are things that you do use to a degree in yeah. the workplace, but, you know, the workplace is about technical skill set and an operational model that you need to adhere to um, in order for you to always just give your best, you know. So I went into DNA Brand Architects with an open mind, you know. I was just starstruck by Sylvester <laughs> because of the great work that he's done yeah. in industry, yeah. you know. Um, people know him from um, from MTV, mm -hmm. people know him from Nando, so, you know, he did very, very well. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be under his leadership and I wanted to be a sponge and absorb so much information so that I can be a better person and a better professional for myself, you know. So it was an amazing journey. Yeah. I learned a lot. Um, I walked out of there with so many awards because I was there for seven years, yeah. of which the two years that I was there, I was the head of Joburg, which is an MD position, sure. you know, um, and we did groundbreaking work, groundbreaking work, amazing, amazing work. Mm. Yeah. And what, what would you say for someone that's young and they really are looking to say, I've seen your journey, how do I get into what you're doing? What are some of those tips in terms of them actually also yeah. doing something that the same, being in the same industry as you? Correct. You know, for me, it's about one, one needs to know their purpose. You know, my purpose has always been to empower and to educate the people. Mm -hmm. In whichever sphere, spectrum that I'm in, I will always try to align myself to my purpose, which mm -hmm. is to empower people and to educate people, yeah. you know, and because that's the objective of my life, I've always known that wherever that I go, I have to serve that objective, sure. you know, so number one is just understanding what your core purpose is in mm -hmm. life. And, you know, education is a very key thing because knowledge expands you and exposes you to so many things. Mm. Um, and with the knowledge, you know, the theoretical background that you have, it is a little bit easier. You are in better state to comprehend certain things in the workplace or in the marketplace at large, you know. So what I would say to young people is, number one, just know your purpose, mm. which is your objective in That's life. So number mm. two, very. Number two, please, please solidify yourself with education, sure. you know, understanding your purpose purpose, study something that is aligned to mm. igniting or that will propel you to live within your purpose, mm. right? And um, number three is work hard, you know. Mm. Um, working hard is not a result of success, right? Mm. Working hard is an ingredient of success. Sure. So um, we have to, have to, have to always, you know, there's a lot of us, Africans, yeah. young um, talent, People are talented out there, guys. Yeah. They are very, very, very talented, you know. So let's not think that because of the fact that we work hard, we have a golden ticket to success. Mm. But we must just understand that putting our best foot forward and working hard is an ingredient to success. Mm. Yeah. Sure. I love that. I love, love, <laughs> love, love, love. Guys, if you're listening, take, 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 take notes. Yeah. And then for you guys, yeah. uh, what is your motivation uh, behind just being part of something like this, this mm. expo, what do you hope to achieve? Or um, even from an impact perspective, what yep. are some of those things for you to look at and say, this is why we want to be a part of this? Yeah, so, you know, it's an objective, a uh, core purpose, you know. For us, um, the mission of our business has always been to create sustainable employment. Mm. Um, my boss talks about it all the time, Mr. Theo Baloy, uh, you know, um, let's note. <laughs> he yes. talks about it all the time. He said when he was in Dubai having a great career, whenever he used to come back home, um, the people that were in the township of Alexandra used to say, we're not asking for money. All that we're asking for is an opportunity to better ourselves. Sure. And then he took it upon himself to take a step, a leap of faith, and create this big giant, you mm. know, in South Africa. Mm. And his sole purpose, his mandate, was to, cre to create sustainable employment, mm. right? So we are here because we believe that we are a role player 
in the sustainable employment. The unemployment rate of South Africa, or in Africa as a continent, is way too high within the youth segment. Mm. It's the largest, yeah. right? So we just wanted to showcase what we do, mm. you know, reignite hope and make sure that we are communicating to the various stakeholders that are going to be coming into our stand mm. and telling them the Batu story, which mm. is a story of hope, which is a story that is highly embedded in the ethos of walking your journey, mm. which is a story that, you know what, gives 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 courage to young people mm. that I can also be because they sure, are. Sure. And there is a true story, you mm. know, it's tangible, we can touch it. Theo is a living, breathing person yeah. that's young. Yeah. He's youth, you yeah. know, yeah. he's <laughs> underneath 35, yeah. you know, so yeah. he... he He's got great impact. So we just wanted to be a part of the narrative that talks about empowerment of youth. We wanted to be a part a part of the narrative that really just is not sitting back, but is actually doing something mm. to impact and to impart young people. You know, we wanted to be given an opportunity to showcase our story of success or the journey that we've taken mm. that have afforded us a seat in the right table mm. to date. Sure. And I think what you said, you know, I think for me, Batu was the first black... Mm. own person that you know when we saw the retail stores rolling out and everything and ever yeah. since then i've just been seeing <laughs> other people and i think yeah. what it's done is also it's it's access right when you Correct. see someone looks like you doing mm. something amazing like what he's Correct. doing um not even just him you guys the team you know yeah. it's not in isolation because you need mm. a team to build um what you guys are doing there's and, a case study yeah. You know? There's a case study. And it's yeah. tangible. Yes. It's like, it's not the business management textbook that you will read um, in varsity that is not relevant sure. to what's happening mm. within our dispensation. Yeah. You know? It's there. You know, they are the first to do it and they have first to market advantage. And what that means is that staying consistent and punching above their weight right now in a tough economy like this is very, very difficult. Yeah. So we're going to need the support of every single South Africans, you know, so that we can have our own story in Africa yeah. of Nike and Adidas and Reebok. Exactly. Why? Why can't we be? You yeah. know, our proposition is, you know, um, um, to create a premium sneaker brand that Africans can proudly affiliate sure. themselves with, you know. So we want to be the first to do it. We want to do it right. We want to be consistent and we want to set the bar. Yeah. You know, we want to be that beacon of hope in Africa. Sure. We want to be tangible. Yeah. We want to be impactful and we want to be purpose driven and led. Sure. Love it. Yeah. And it's what you are doing. And I'm so excited that to see what it happens for the, for the rest of the continent, the world, that's to see it. everything that's happening. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you for your work. Thank you for the impact and thank you for just really, yeah, the stories that you guys, um, it's the story and the narratives. That's the word that it, you're creating for everyone and anyone that's out there. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Thank and, you. Um, yeah, thank you. No, thank you for having me. I really appreciated this conversation. It was a great one. Yeah. You know, but before we go, I really want to say thank you for every single South African that walks into our stores or goes into our e-commerce platforms and purchases our sneakers, you know. Mm. Um, with all the challenges that we have, you know, you still believe in us and you believe sure. in a South African yes. product. And that, we will never take it for granted. And we just want to say, we thank you. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yay! <laughs>Welcome back. Welcome back to the Youth Expo. We are still here. Oh my goodness, guys. It's amazing. I mean, mm. I've been meeting amazing people. And <laughs> I think anyone that's here, you leave inspired by all the speakers, by the companies and the opportunities available to you. Other than that, I have the amazing, the one and only Nomza Mombata Yay. joining us for a conversation. And I'm excited to talk to her. And as I was saying her name, I got goosebumps. Oh, why? Yeah, like, I, I was just <laughs> exciting to have this conversation with you. Um, so I wanted to just, you know, jump into the reason why we're here. You mm. know, we look at the unemployment rate in the country. Yeah. We look at the opportunities that are out there, but the lack of opportunities right. for young people. What do you think we need? to do more of to make sure that we are you know bring this to young people thinking about unemployment rate and all of that 
Sure. I mean, I think it's a giant of an issue that, that, that needs to literally be, you know, tackled from so many different forefronts. But I think private sector, uh, because I'm not going to speak about the public sector. Yeah. We know what that situation is like. But private sector needs to be more aggressive, needs to be more creative in how they provide opportunities for young people. Private sector is something called corporate mm. social initiative yeah corporate social responsibility mm. and what does that look like it should not just look like painting a school and turning your bag and going yeah cutting a you ribbon. have exactly or cutting a ribbon and saying here you go yeah. enjoy bye on to the next one and we tick the box yeah. you have to be able to be more creative when it comes mm. to creating opportunities and self-sustaining systems sure. so that people who are marginalized don't have to depend on anyone yeah. and whatever system that's been built mm. as a C CSR or CSI initiative is something that's going to be able to, number one, empower the community, mm. empower society, mm. but also empower the people who you've handed it over to so that they don't have to come back and say, we need. Yes. You will be the one to come sure. back in 10 years' time yes. and see a system that has completely revolutionized. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And mm. I mean, you're already doing amazing work with your foundation. Thank what you. What are some of the things that you hope your foundation will achieve um, and all the work that you guys are doing right now? Sheesh, I'm just hoping that we do be a, that we are a, able to be able to build those kinds of systems. Yeah. You know, systems that impact communities, change society, um, and systems that are self-sustaining mm -hmm. so that we can be able to say that we created that vehicle yeah. and look where it is right now. Yeah. So, you know, with, with my foundation, of course there's going to be other systems where we won't be able to do something of that nature, mm -hmm. and we have to literally go in and it's an emergency relief. But outside of the emergency relief, what does it look like? It looks like not putting fish in someone's hand, but giving them a fish rod and so teaching them how that. to fish. I love that. That is how we break the cycle of poverty. Yes. That is how we break or, or tackle uh, the unemployment rate. Of course, there's other plethora of things yes, you know that yes. that contribute to to tackling such an issue but i really think that we have to go back down to the basics and also learn from first world countries mm. or developed countries and how they were able to um to move from a very mm. impoverished state of being to to where they are now and the different systems that they had to adopt and implement sure yeah. i love 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 that i think Thank it's you. so important and i think even going back to access you know sure. sometimes we um study something because that's all we know and then you get in you're like actually this is not my passion mm. i wish i had more resources to explore other things i mean i'm in tech and sure the amount of women in this space you can actually count them that's and it so for me when i look at your journey you started with studying something else mm. and then you found your your way into something else what would you say to a young person that's sort of navigating that I'm here, but I need to move to this space, yeah. but I don't know if I have the right resources to just jump into this new space. Mm. I don't have the right people around me. Um, what are some of the things they can do to actually also find themselves in those kind of spaces? Whew. I mean, just intent, you know, be intentional about what it is that you want to build for your life. Mm. And once you have the intent and uh, put down a plan, you know, I, I also believe in the power of pivoting, right? Mm. We're not quitting, we're pivoting. Sure. Yeah. And I, I used quitting for the longest time when I was like, you know, I quit university at a certain point, but I went back yeah. and I got my degree, but I didn't quit. I actually wanted to pivot. Because I always knew that I had a passion for mm. people. I had a passion for, for showbiz and I had a passion for storytelling mm. and I wanted to be able to explore that. But I also love numbers. I love the business world. Mm. I'm really good in business. Yeah. So how do I you know, balance those two things? And I think also there's so many people who are so ready to, to drop out and leave something mm. or pivot too early because they're in the rush of success. Trust you me, no matter what happens, Everything takes time. time. Yes. Everything takes time. We just produce. We just show the instant results. You know. Mm. Uh, let me let me give a clear example. Shaga ilemli. I have so many people who are like, you know, I've been pitching for the past two months. I've been pitching and no one wants to pick up the show. I'm like, my goodness, at least two months. <laughs> Child, we were pitching for five years. <laughs> <laughs> Convincing stakeholders to come on board. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So it 
takes time and also stay the course. Mm -hmm. Rejection is absolutely fantastic. Sure. I love rejection because for me, it's always about learning from it. Ooh, I'm like, in yeah. which place am I supposed to learn mm. from here? In which place am I supposed to build from this? Mm. You know, and how have I become better from this particular rejection? Sure. And I have got a bag of rejection, okay? Yeah. So it's really just about um, understanding that the journey is long, mm. but also young people stay in school. Yeah. Stay in school so you can be able to have the language for the for the sure, life that. that is waiting for you. I love that. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't stay in school. You won't have the language and you won't have the discipline. Mm. You will not understand the power of hard work. Mm, I yeah. love that. I love that. Um, what would you say to a young Nomzamo when you are still on in the space of navigating, Yay. looking at yourself right now? I would say Zamo, <laughs> continue to look beyond the horizon. Continue to be curious about the things that are beyond your borders. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love, love. That's what I tell Thank her. you so, so <laughs> much for making time. Thank you. And um, inspiring a lot of young people. Yay. And we're excited to see what's going to happen with your career. And yeah. We're counting down, guys. Thank okay, you. Okay, by this time it would have aired. I hope by this time you would yeah, have yeah, watched yeah, the yeah. show. <laughs> but by the way, I'm, I too have to just say before I go, I am so inspired. I'm so inspired by this generation that I get to live with, that I get to thrive with, that I get to suffer with. <laughs> I really am inspired by it because every time I see people who are my age and my peers in different sectors, like yourself, yeah. winning, pushing through boundaries, breaking glass ceilings, sure. I'm like, Zamo, that is testament. Oh, that is testament it. that you too. Yeah. So when it's in the neighborhood, you are the neighbor child. So thank you to every single young person in this country mm. who, in spite of the things that continue to be hurdles for us, you guys go for it. Oh. We are so inspired. I'm inspired. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, honey. I'm going to ride. <laughs> yes. Hi everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Equip and Elevate. This is a special edition. We're doing this in partnership with the Matiba Foundation. We are currently at the Youth Expo. It's been such an amazing day. We've met so many young, great young people. We've met young people that are passionate about finding out more about what they can either expose new opportunities for their lives or even just understanding what are the opportunities that are out there based on what they're studying right now. So I have Linda from Time Bank right now. I'm really excited to have the conversation with, with her. Um, they are an official sponsor, so we also get into the importance of these kind of expos in the line of you know, getting young people more exposure around what is possible for them. Mm -hmm. So maybe Linda, you can let us tell us about who you are. You can go into what you do, and I think also why, how you landed where you are right now. Because so are some people they stumble upon this, or they studied this, and this is where they are now. So please tell us a little bit about who you are. Okay. Um, so I'm first and foremost a, a mother <laughs> to a 21 year old. Wow. Uh, but <laughs> in terms of my history, born and bred in um, Cape Town. Sure. Um, then moved to Kimberley, uh, the city of Di Khrotkhat, as, as they call it. Um, and then I spent my high school years in Pretoria. Mm. Um, what then happened is I, I'd always wanted to study at UCT, so I ended up back in Cape Town. So I guess I, 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 <laughs> it all came full circle. And what I studied there was um, a Bachelor of Business Science. Um, I started with IT. Uh, I guess I was confused at the time yeah. because it was it was the time of the IT boom and, you know, everyone's telling you, do this, this is the right way to go. Yeah. But I just realized as I was in class that, okay, it wasn't moving me, I wasn't inspired, yeah. you know, by code or things like that. And one day they had an open lecture for marketing mm. and I, I went to the lecture um, and the professor at the time, Professor Simpson, you know, he was going through marketing. What is it about? What do you do? And for me, that was very fascinating. Mm. And I found it super stimulating and interesting, specifically because I'm the type of person who's curious. Yeah. Um, and I also like to observe people. Um, what do they do? Like, why is she wearing those earrings? Mm. You know, why, you know, the, you know, different things. So, so the, the um, consumer behavior side of marketing really intrigued me. 
So I had to go and, you know, deregister from one degree to the other. Sure. But it wasn't easy because you have to write like a motivation yeah. as to why you're doing that. So I'm, I'm glad I was able to, to find the strength to do that because I had to, you know, take it to the Dean mm-hmm. of Commerce, who was the very same professor. And he did warn me then that, look, when you do this, you're going to be here an extra year. Are you, are you OK with that? And I said, yes. Mm. Um, and yeah, so that was me and marketing. And uh, and before, sorry, before you move on, how mm. differently would you have done it had you had exposure around marketing before you even entered university? Yeah, I think I would have, from the get-go, applied for, for marketing mm. because I had the points, um, because UCT works on a point system. So instead of wasting a year studying something I didn't fully understand, mm. I would have just, from the get-go, you know, um, gotten into the right degree. Mm. And I think... Yes, there's a lot more knowledge about marketing now, mm. you know, because it's grown. And I think that's based on digital, right? So digital marketing, content creation, influencers and all of mm. that. So, so there's a lot more awareness. But back in the, in, 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 in the days, it, it really was just about brand management. Mm. You didn't really understand what do those people do exactly, you know? Mm. Yeah. Sure. And what what would you say for like a young person in a very similar situation right now where they want to learn more about marketing, but they don't really know if it's the right match for them? Why are some of the things they should look out for? Yeah. So I think your personality is important. And I'm not saying that introverts can't be marketers. I'm an introvert myself, mm. but I'm, I'm in marketing. Um, but what's important is what are your interests? Mm. What are the things that you know drive you or uh, you are passionate about so for instance if 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 you're always on your phone if you like travel you know maybe there's something there you could be a travel influencer but it's also important to investigate you know careers Mm. um, and also where opportunities arise within companies there are opportunities to job to job to job shadow people yeah so whether it's through your own network or through your friends network so if you know someone who knows someone who works at a company that you would like to work at, um, you know, those types of opportunities also help. Even if you spend just a day or two at a company, um, just for the day, following a person around and seeing, okay, is this, is this what I could do? Yeah. 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 And I think for me, because of that very experience and also knowing that as black people, we don't, we don't necessarily have the networks or, or the social capital to have access to those type of things. So every time I've been approached by someone who says, I'd like to shadow you, I've done it. Mm. You know, obviously as the, inter- access, yeah. as the internal manager, you, you know, you have to motivate to the mm. business. I'm bringing Usbani Bani, she's going to be following me around. You know, some of the stuff is confidential, so mm. they won't attend those meetings. So, so I think, you know, for, for those of us who are in corporate, especially because uh or our backgrounds don't necessarily prepare us for corporate i think we have a responsibility to the next generation to to teach them mm. you know the do's and don'ts like don't don't arrive after your boss you know mm. don't be late every day yeah you know yeah. You, you have to dress a certain way yeah. uh don't do this don't do there's there, there isn't a book for that no, right there's no <laughs> manual you literally walk in that time you're the first generation yes. to walk into corporate whereas yes. all the time your your mother mommy was a teacher mm. and we worked in public service so exactly. you're like the first person walking in there with no sort of manual on how to navigate yourself around there mm. um mm. how important is it for you to be involved in these kind of conversations and this kind of i would say access for young people yeah, I think for us it's it's very important. I think when we look at our purpose, the bank was started based on, you know, the founder seeing that there was a challenge with um, financial access, um, especially in the lower end of the market. Mm. And the, the, the myth at the time was that, you know, they are unbankable because you know, it, it's not worth it for banks to, mm. to, to, to bank um, that, that, that segment. And, and I think w- with the use of technology, you are then able to cut out the costs, which is why we don't have branches. Mm. So then what we've done is we've, we've removed the cost in the business model such that we can then deliver 
um, almost free banking um, to, to South Africans. Sure. Yeah. And for us, um, just in terms of illustration, so a lot of the people who work for us, especially the ambassadors that you see at the kiosks and in the shops, mm. those are people that we've recruited via an organization called Harambe. Mm. And yes, uh, Harambe. Yeah. yeah. And the rationale behind that was when we first did the kiosks, um, we noticed that people were scared, you know. People don't want to press and maybe get a, get something wrong. You don't want to break the machine. Mm. So having somebody there, and these people are recruited from the communities that mm. surround the kiosk. At least it's someone you know, you know, maybe kikaus pinky or kipinki, and then they can take you through the journey and and help you, you know, get an account or, you know, help you with whatever query you got. Mm. And what we noticed is that as soon as we put ambassadors in. The, the trust barrier, you know, went down, um, and also we were able to onboard more people in stores like that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so, so much yeah. um, for joining us today. And um, and I hope that anyone was, that was listening, maybe trying to navigate around marketing or navigate around decisions for university, I hope you were really um, inspired and learned something. And then I hope you also put yourself out there in terms of finding out more about these resources. Thank you so much Thank for having you. me. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Hey everyone, we are back at the Youth Expo. We are almost at the end of the day. We've been really had amazing conversations. You guys have been listening to really amazing people that are doing amazing things in the industry, at different industries, and also young people that are passionate about just how they can better equip and elevate other people around them. As I say that, I've got another amazing young person. I'm excited to have a conversation with her. And I think the amazing thing about this, we are at the Youth Expo and she has an incredible story to share around her experience here, where she's at right now. So I'm gonna introduce her um, and welcome Vanilisa to the podcast. Um, she is here on behalf of Agri Enterprise. But before we get into that, tell us a little bit about who you are um, and what you do and how you found yourself sitting in this couch. Oh my goodness, I don't even know where to start. Um, Manilis is really such a, well, people normally describe me as such a calm person. Um, I'm Manilis Mplanga, originally from Pretoria, Mamilodi to be exact. Um, I have a postgraduate um, qualification in agricultural economics. Currently work for Agri Enterprises, which is a subsidiary for Agri SA. I am the current Rural Development Coordinator for the Rural Development and CSI Division. And that is basically Balinsa in a nutshell. And to answer your question as to how do I find myself sitting here, I don't know if they have enough time for me to narrate <laughs> the story. <laughs> to narrate the story, but my story really begins um, 2022. I've just completed my undergraduate studies. I'm doing my honors degree in the University of Free State. And I'm actually back at home for just a recap or like to just relax, it's holiday season, I don't have anything to do. And as a young graduate, I'm much more obsessed about where am I gonna get a job? How am I gonna get a job? So I'm really obsessed with LinkedIn. I wake up in the morning, browse through LinkedIn, and oh my goodness, I see this yellow green poster. Yeah. With, the famous colors. Yes, the famous colors. Yeah. <laughs> Bright and all yellowish. And the only words that actually speak to me to that poster is youth, opportunities, and graduate. And I was like, oh my goodness, how is this connected to me? How can I connect to it? How do I get to the event? I see a link. Sign up for the link. Fortunate enough, I was, I was, I saw the link that um, enabled me to sign up for the physical attendance of the event. Yeah. I sign up and I'm like, okay, I'll see you in the next two days because another funny part is that I actually saw the poster like two days before the event was hosted. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool, uh, let me sign up. I don't know how I'm gonna get there. I don't have a car, I don't have taxi fare. I'm just like, I'll just make a plan closer to the day because my parents couldn't drive me. They were on their way to work. So I'm like, I'll just make a plan. Yeah. Um, the day comes, I attend the Mutsipe Expo um, event, and before that, I saw a list, I did my research, because I mean, I'm a young graduate, I'm looking for job opportunities, I need to make sure that I get myself out there, that when I speak to potential employers, 
immediately they see that there is something within me and it is a desire for them to actually get me onto their organization or company. Yeah. I do a little research on some of the companies and panelists that are going to be there and to my surprise, because I'm looking for agricultural related companies, yeah. to my surprise I only saw Agri Enterprises, Agri SA and RCL Foods. I'm yeah. like, okay, cool. I have three companies now. Very awesome. It's going to make my research much more easier. Yeah. I'm like, okay, let me go find out who exactly is going to be attending the event or just familiarize myself with um, the team. I'm like, okay, cool. I do that with Agri SA. I do that with Agri Enterprises and RCL as well. Because I was so busy networking and trying to find their stalls during the event, I only bumped into Agri Enterprises' stall. And I'm like, okay, this is my shot. <laughs> Let me go for it. I met a lady by the name of Shanae Rudolph. She's the current head of marketing and research at Agri Enterprises. And I had prior practiced lines that I was going to say to her. Because I was like, okay, my name is Manil Simplang. I have a degree in whatsoever. And I'm looking for a job. Do you have any openings? I would like to volunteer and so forth. I tell her my scripted lines and she's like oh okay not a problem we currently don't have any positions open just like many companies do but I didn't lose my faith and then she was like um, please just go drop your CV at um, our email address I'm like okay please give me the email address she gives me the info email address and I'm like oh, my goodness it's probably gonna be another dead end yeah. She's like no just make sure that you send me your CV Immediately when I turned away from her, I sent my CV just like that. I was like, hi, Shanae, you said I should send you my CV. Yeah. Done. Hung around, waited for her to actually leave the stall so I can speak to another representative of Agri Enterprise to yeah. just try and increase my opportunities or my chances. Yes. Went to Wesley Ferguson, who was um, the former corporate and finance um, head manager told him the same story, he told me the same story, drop us your CV using the info link, I did that. Fortunately enough, Agri Enterprises was also hosting, um, or running rather, a competition whereby the giveaway was a pair of shoes from the Batu, Batu Walk Your Journey um, company. And I entered that competition, and the competition was really simple. It was just take a picture of our stall, post it on LinkedIn and tag us. That's it. You don't have to say anything. So in my mind, I've always wanted to be unique. My question was, how am I going to make myself stand out? Because I saw everybody was just like tagging them and not saying yeah, anything. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I need to stand out. I need to make myself visible, make them want to give me the pair of shoes yeah. because they had always been a dream of my, for me. I had said during my final year of study, I'm going to buy myself a pair of Batu shoes. Little did I know that I was going to get that for free. Cool. So I enter the competition and I say some really awesome insights that I got from the event and from my interactions with the Agri Enterprise team. And I won myself a pair of Batu shoes. On the day of me collecting my prize, which was the Batu shoes, I went to their offices in Centurion. Yeah. And Shanae was like, would you like to come in for an interview? And wow. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is not happening. I was like, yes, definitely, yes, for sure. Yes, of course. I went in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, of course, definitely. Went in for an interview. They were, they were not looking for any um, individual at that specific time. But she was just like, let's just have an interview and see what you have to offer. Did the interview with the entire staff of Agri Enterprises, which was very, oh my goodness, a bit scary because you can just imagine this is one of my few interviews. I'm a fresh graduate from university. Did the interview. After a week or so, um, Agri Enterprises replied to me with an email asking for my school um, results, send them to them, my qualification, and they were like, congratulations, you've got yourself a job. And wow. that's how I am today, sure. right here. <laughs> Amazing. I love the story. This is, I think this is also why it affirms why these are so important. And I think True. for anyone that's out there, and anyone that's listening, put yourself out, out there. there like you did. I mean, you weren't just like, hi, I'm interested in a job. You actually made sure that they knew that you actually were someone who was for the company and should Definitely. be employed by you. Definitely. So I think, thank you so much for sharing your journey and your story. And I think for anyone that's out there, I really love your, you know, how your strategy was in terms of going after what you wanted, speaking to different people in the organization and making sure that you stand out somehow. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, that and has always been my goal, sure. making sure that you stand 
stand out. Yeah, mm. amazing. I love what you've shared with and I really hope that anyone that's out there you also do the same and learn about how you can strategically place yourself in a space where you organize an organization can notice you. Thank you so much for inviting me once again. And just my last words, if I may. Yes. I would just really like to thank the Mutsipa Foundation because if it really wasn't for them hosting this event, I wouldn't be where I'm sitting at right now. Sure. I wouldn't have grown so much because I started as an intern, as a rural administrator, walked up my ladder, and a year later, I'm actually a rural development coordinator. Yeah. I'm responsible for specific um, running of the projects that we run under the Rural Development um, Division. So thank you so much, Mutsipis Foundation. Thank you so much to all of the companies that actually intervened and sponsored some of the things. I, I, it's really a dream come true for me. Amazing. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I have Tandazani from Fast Track, which is a Mutsipa Foundation initiative. I'm excited to chat about what the work is doing in fashion, as well as what the Fast Track is for anyone that's out there and wanting to explore what that is. We are still live at the Youth Expo, and guys, we're having so much fun. Please, please, please check out the Youth Expo on YouTube. Check out our videos if you listen to this, um, and welcome. Thank you so much. So please tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do okay. um, and really the work you're doing in fashion with the Mutipa Foundation. All right. So my name is Tanazani North England. I'm from the Eastern Cape. So I have a brand uh, called Abandu. So what Abandu does is we, we want to tell, uh, it's a closer culture. We want to reimagine uh, closer nuances and then we turn those into fashion. So we've been doing that through the collections um, where we, we take inspiration from pretty much everything that is to do with this class. And so we focus on, on a particular subject at that time. So I made it to the Fast Track uh, program, which is a program by AFI. Mm. Uh, it's like a, a development program where uh, young designers, uh, they get to compete for, for a prize, but then between that, there's like a lot of programs that we go to, like this one that we had. Mm. I was in Botswana uh, for that as well, for the Forbes uh, 30 Under 30, mm. uh, which was also um, a, an AFI uh, initiative. So, sure. how has your experience been with the Fast Track? How, what, you know, you mentioned the Forbes, what other opportunities have you gotten through this Fast Track um, initiative that's run by the Multiple Foundation? Yeah, so uh, on our first week, we, we went to Cape Town for a week, for Fashion Week. So basically, we just go through uh, what it takes to, to, to run a Fashion Week. So from, from fittings mm -hmm. to like how, you, you, how designers come and how do they showcase. Mm -hmm. So pretty much everything that has to do with, with Fashion Week, we, we, we get taught there in, 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 in Cape Town. So it's been that and the Botswana experience and then this now. Okay. And what would you say for anyone that's on their journey, they're applying for um, sort of want to start the process of either getting to fashion or maybe looking for, I would say, mentorship or um, sort of an initiative that supports young entrepreneur, entrepreneurs. What would you say to that person? I mean, yeah, I'd say first, if, if let's say if you're a designer, just make sure that you, you create original work because then when you create original work, you will, you will invite people in, in, in like people that will like your work. Mm. And then it's just about people liking your work and then you have to apply for stuff. Mm. When you see an opportunity like the fast track, deadline, just try and put up a portfolio and then apply for that, you, ne you, might, you never know if mm. you might get it or not. I mean, that's what I did as well. Mm. So. What advice would you give to an entrepreneur? Uh, to an entrepreneur, start, you know, I think ask questions and also find your niche because with, with fashion, I'm, I'm not doing everything. I'm, I'm focusing on print and knitwear. That's that's because I'm a textile designer yeah. by profession. So I'm I, I wanna I'm focusing on that thing until I'm I'm interested maybe in doing like furniture. But then as an entrepreneur, just find your niche and then focus on that and see where it takes you. Okay, thank you so much for sharing and all the best with your 
business and we look forward to seeing you with your store in these in Milan. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you so much. Cool, cool. Thank you. See. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Remember, the episode does not end here. So make sure you go on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and also Google Podcasts to check out the full episode and be inspired, learn so much more and learn more from our guests today. I hope you stay equipped and elevated. Love from Ayanda.